In the name of the living God, who is Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit. Amen. August the 6th is the Feast of the Transfiguration. That's why we heard that story. Today is the Feast of the Transfiguration. And we hear that story at the end of the season of Epiphany as well, but today is the Feast of the Transfiguration. And when it falls on a Sunday, that's what we celebrate. That's what we observe. And I was thinking the other day, how often does that happen? Because I don't really remember celebrating this feast on a Sunday that much. So I googled it, and this is the answer I got. Well, August the 6th falls on a Sunday approximately 56 times in every 400 years. <laughs> That's what Google said, so I guess that means about every seven or eight years, and I guess that makes sense, right? About seven or eight, but uh, anyway, um, I, I, that's, that's, that's what it said, that's what Google said. So we are celebrating the Feast of the Transfiguration today. It's an important day. It's a very important day for me on, for various occasions. Number one is uh, my mother was born on August the 6th in 1910. And um, she was a good woman. She was a faithful woman. She was a caring, creative, hospitable, sensitive woman, a typical Southern lady. Um, when she approached the century mark, she had some dementia and got confused sometimes, but shoot, a lot of us get confused, right? And um, I'll never forget one time we were at Pauly's Island and uh, getting ready to go to bed and Pauly's Island, at a, at a beach house in Pauly's Island. This was about uh, two years um, before she was 100. She, uh, and Joanne and I were going to get, get her ready for bed. We were sort of in the hallway, and she was in her bedroom. But um, I kissed Joanne, my wife. And uh, my mother saw me do that. And, <laughs> and so I went to the door where she was, and she said, um, she said, I saw you kissing that woman. <laughs> kind of took me aback. She never said anything like that. She hardly, I, I don't really remember her being that angry ever, but I saw you kissing that woman. And I said, oh, I didn't say anything. And she said, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> and you know, when she, when she pointed that finger at me, I did feel like a little six-year-old, very much ashamed. But 15 minutes later, after Joanne and I had helped her get ready for bed and tucked her in, she kissed us both and, and called us, honey. Good night, honey. I listened to my mother, and I learned a lot from her. And I learned a lot about being a faithful Christian from listening to my mother. August the 6th is another important date for me because in 1976, on August the 6th, I was ordained a priest. And uh, it was in Pauly's Island. This Pauly's Island keeps popping up in my life. Um, and um, I went there from seminary to serve a white congregation, colonial congregation, been there since the 1700s as the assistant rector, and to serve an African American mission, which was a combination of two other congregations, to be their priest in charge. And I will certainly never forget that day on August the 6th, 1976, when those two congregations came together and the gospel choir from Holy Cross Faith Memorial, before I was ordained, just before I was ordained, sang, I want Jesus to walk with me. I want Jesus to walk with me all along my pilgrim journey. I want Jesus to walk with me. Well, I listened to that choir too. And I'll never forget that moment because as I listened to them sing, I got goosebumps and I get them now because I thought, 
My goodness, that is exactly what I'm trying to do. That's what I want to do. And ever since that moment, this whole thing about journey, the path, the way, of course, it's all in Scripture and it's all in the way we talk about it, but those images are critical to my being a Christian, walking with Jesus. And guess what? There's one more story. Today, August the 6th, 2017, I'm right here, but um, I used to be at the Church of the Epiphany. That's what I almost said as I, stand it up, as I stood up here. I almost said, well, we're the Church of the Epiphany. I'm not there anymore. It's St. James in Warrington, thank goodness. But um, today is the first Sunday for the new rector at the Church of the Epiphany in downtown Washington. Today, they're celebrating the Feast of the Transfiguration. Yet another chapter, a new chapter, a new beginning for that congregation. And you know what? That congregation, which I served for 21 years, is a group of people, a very diverse congregation, extremely, crazily diverse. That group is another, is, 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 is another group of people that I listen to, and I learn so much. Just like when I listen to you, my faith is strengthened, and I learn so much. Enough about me. This is about us. This is about you. This is what we're celebrating as a faith community, the Feast of the Transfiguration, the story which you just heard. It's a story that's in the, in the Synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. It, Peter, wrote, Peter referred to it in that second reading. And, of course, the first reading talked about, talked about Moses. Talk about Elijah. Talk about, you know, what we hear here. It's an important event. Why is it so important? Because in this event, in this biblical event, in this event in the life of Jesus, just before he began his journey to Jerusalem, where it all ended and began again, just before he started that journey, this critical experience was there for Jesus. And, and you, can, you can see tones of previous events in other, other life events in, the, in Jesus. I mean, I mean, what about the mountain? How many things have happened on the mountain? You know, the Sermon on the Mount and Moses going up Mount Sinai. What about the clouds? We've talked about clouds before, the presence of the holy. What about, um, what about, um, people standing with Jesus. Um, what about those words? Listen, this is, this, is, this is my son, my beloved, with whom I'm well pleased. Listen to him. That was, that was said at the beginning at Jesus' baptism, at the beginning of his ministry. So here it is sort of one more time. Let's, let's have one more time around the, trip, around the track and remind everybody about who Jesus is. The Son of God. Somebody to listen to. In this building, in this sacred space, I've referred to that window before. Now, that window uh, is not the transfiguration, it's the, it's the ascension window. And I, was, I researched it in Dr. Eileen Lang, you know who Dr. Eileen Lang is? Is Niney Lang sitting right over here, so it was going to sound a little bit. But anyway, uh, here's what Dr. Eileen Lang says of, of that window. Stylistic reminiscent of Raphael's transfiguration. Raphael, the famous painter. Transfiguration, what we're celebrating today. The window resonates with the force of Christ's glory. Well put. My point is this, is that this thing that we're celebrating today really does hearken back in many ways to early events in the life of Jesus for a good reason. For all of us to sort of remember what has previously happened, just as Peter, James, and John on that mountain with Jesus were reminded, for us to be reminded of what happened to Jesus before he went to Jerusalem and the world was changed, turned upside down. The words of God, 
the voice of God ended with these three words. Listen to him. It's so important to listen to family members, to fellow parishioners, to friends, to listen to people that can help us grow into the faith. In this case, we are encouraged by Scripture, by the Word of God, to listen to Jesus, which is something we can continue to work on until it comes second nature. Some people have compared that event as actually being a mystical experience, it being sort of a prayer for Peter, James, and John. I mean, to hear a word, to be scared and frightened by the presence of God, to see something brand new and special, and yet in the end, as Matthew tells the story, Jesus touches Peter, James, and John and says, don't be scared. It's just me. It's Jesus. Listen to him. So what I hope, my prayer for all of us, is that this Sunday will be another time to plant a seed in our souls. A seed which can grow along with other, other strands throughout our prayer life that grow in ways that help us listen to Jesus. And in the quiet time, that's what I want you to focus on. I want you to ask Jesus not only to walk with me, but talk with me. I want you to consider what, what would it be like to listen more deeply and closely to the voice of Jesus in your lives. And what difference would it make? I want to ask us to be silent for two minutes, manageable, two minutes, and in some way at least put yourself in the holy presence of this place and know that God is here. And maybe also say, Jesus, I want you to talk with me. I want you to walk with me, and I want you to talk with me. Help me get to that place where I can listen.
Amen.